Microsoft PowerPoint VBA Introduction. This is CBT TJM. In just a few minutes, you are going to understand the central Microsoft PowerPoint VBA objects, presentation, slide, and shape. Everything you go on to learn in PowerPoint VBA will depend on these objects. First, the presentation. Presentations correspond to .ppt or .pptx files. Let's demonstrate opening an existing .pptx file as a presentation. Sub demo open presentation, dim pres as presentation, set pres equals presentations dot open, c demo data demo dot pptx, message box pres dot name. See that we went from just one presentation to two? Presentations is a collection of the PowerPoint dot application object that is all the presentations currently open. The presentations collection is always available. I didn't name that variable. Each presentation has many properties, one of them being name. The name of a saved presentation is its file name. Now let's see how to create a new presentation. Sub demo new presentation. Dim pres as presentation. Set pres equals presentations dot add. Message box pres dot name. See now that we have a new blank presentation? So the presentations collection is our access to open an existing presentation from disk and also to create a new unsaved presentation. Notice that the name property is whatever PowerPoint put into the window title, something like presentation and then a one-up number. Once you save the presentation, its name will change to the file name. That is the bare basics of presentations. Presentations have slides, the second of our primary PowerPoint VBA object types. Let's activate the third slide of an existing presentation. Sub select third slide. Dim pres as presentation. Set pres equals presentations dot open. C demo data demo dot pptx dim slide as slide set slide equals pres dot slides three slide dot select message box slide dot name notice that the third slide is now active like presentations and many other VBA objects each slide has a name property as a preview the name property is important because you can give it a meaningful value like summary or quarter four sales. Then, when you are working with the slides programmatically, you don't have to know that the summary slide is the 23rd slide because you can refer to it by name. But I am getting ahead of myself. Let's create a new slide. Sub create new slide. Dim pres as presentation. Set pres equals presentations dot add. Dim slide as slide. Set slide equals pres dot slides dot add. One pp layout blank. Slide dot name equals quarter four sales. Message box slide dot name. Like one of the earlier examples, we created a new presentation that has not been saved. Then we added a new slide. And we gave the new slide a meaningful name so that we can refer to it later programmatically with that name. The line that adds the slide is worth explaining. First, IntelliSense, or the auto suggest feature, will suggest that you use the add slides method, but you should use the add method instead. There are two mandatory arguments to the add function the slide index and the type of layout to use for the new slide. The slide index is one because it is the first slide. We choose a layout from the PP layout constants. In this case, PP layout blank. PP stands for PowerPoint and you will find many other PowerPoint constants with this naming convention. Now let's talk about shapes. Everything that is displayed on a slide in PowerPoint is some kind of shape. Titles, pictures, OLE charts from Microsoft Excel, text boxes, these are all shapes. Each slide has a collection of shapes in a collection named, you guessed it, shapes. Let's get the first shape on the first slide of an open presentation. Sub first shape demo, dim pres as presentation, set pres equals presentations, demo dot pptx, dim slide as slide, set slide equals pres dot slides, quarter four sales, dim shape as shape, set shape equals slide dot shapes one, message box shape, dot text frame dot text range dot text. We demonstrated a couple of new things this time. First, we set pres to be a presentation that was already open. In this case, you just index into the presentations collection with the presentation name, which is the file name. So now you have seen how to open an existing presentation with presentations dot open file name, how to create a new presentation with presentations dot add, and how to work with a presentation that is already open by specifying the presentation name to the presentation's collection index. Then we use the same collection name syntax to get a variable to an existing named slide. 
we could have instead used the slide number. In a previous session, I had set this slide's name property so that we could come back and work with it programmatically. It is a best practice to name your slides. Then, remember that everything visible on a slide is a shape. We know there is at least one shape on the slide, and it will have index 1. The first numbered index in VBA collections is 1, not 0 like some other languages. I happen to know that this is a text frame, so we can call the shape.textframe.textrange.text. This terribly long-winded syntax is necessary because shapes may be text frames or something else completely without any text, such as a picture. So there are the three most fundamental object types in Microsoft PowerPoint VBA. Make sure you understand these because they will be the basis for all future PowerPoint VBA programming we do. Of course, there are more details about each of these objects that we will discuss later. If this video helped you, please give this video a thumbs up, watch my other videos, and subscribe to CBT TJM.